Saint Augustine, commentary on Psalm 57. We have heard in the Gospel just now, brethren, how loves us our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, God with the Father, man with us, out of our own selves, now at the right hand of the Father, you have heard how much he loves us. Because then this psalm is singing of the passion of the Lord, see what is the title that it has at the end. The end is Christ. Roman 10, 4. Why has he been called end? Not as one that consumes, but one that consummates. At the end, corrupt not for David himself, for the inscription of the title, when he fled from the face of Saul into a cavern. We, referring to Holy Scripture, do find indeed how holy David, that king of Israel, from whom too the Psalter of David has received the name thereof, had suffered for persecutor Saul, the king of his own people, as many of you know that have either read, that have either read or have heard the scriptures. King David had then for persecutor Saul, and whereas the one was most gentle, the other most ferocious, the one mild, the other envious, the one patient, the other cruel, the one beneficent, the other ungrateful, he endured him with so much mildness that when he had gotten him into his hands, him he touched not, hurt not. What reference has this to Christ? If all things which then were being done were figures of things future, we find there Christ and by far in the greatest degree. For this corrupt not for the inscription of the title, I see not how it belongs to that David. For not any title was inscribed over David himself, which Saul would corrupt. But we see in the Passion of the Lord that there had been written a title, King of the Jews, in order that this title might put to the blush these very men, seeing that from their king they withheld not their hands. For in them Saul was in Christ, in Christ David was. For Christ, as says the apostolic gospel, is, as we know, as we confess, of the seed of David after the flesh. For after the Godhead he is above David, above all men, above heaven and earth, above angels, above all things visible and invisible. And because already it had been sung through the Holy Spirit, and to the end corrupt not for the inscription of the title, Pilate answered them, What I have written, I have written. John 19, 22. Why do we suggest to me falsehood? I corrupt not truth. What therefore is when he fled from the face of Saul into a cavern? Which thing indeed the former David also did, but because in him we find not the inscription of the title, in the latter let us find the flight into the cavern. 1 Samuel 24, 3 For that cavern wherein David hid himself did figure somewhat. But wherefore hid he himself? It was in order that he might be concealed and not be found. What is to be hidden in a cavern? To be hidden in earth. For he that flees into a cavern with earth is covered so that he may not be seen. But Jesus did carry earth, flesh which he had received from earth, and in it he concealed himself in order that by Jews he might not be discovered as God. For if they had known, never the Lord of glory would they have crucified. 
1 Corinthians 2 8. Why therefore the Lord of glory found them not? Because in a cavern he had hidden himself, that is, the flesh's weakness to their eyes he presented, but the majesty of the Godhead in the body's clothing, as though in a hiding place of the earth. He hid, but wherefore even unto death will he to be patient? It was in order that he might flee from the face of Saul into a cavern, for a cavern may be understood as a lower part of the earth. And certainly, as is manifest and certain to all, his body in a tomb was laid, which was cut in a rock. This tomb, therefore, was the cavern. Thither he fled from the face of Saul. For so long the Jews did persecute him, even until, even until he was led in a cavern. Whence prove we that so long they persecuted him until therein he was led? Even when dead and on the cross hanging, with lance they wounded him. John 19.34 But when shrouded the funeral celebrated, he was laid in a cavern, no longer had they anything which to the flesh they might do. Was therefore the Lord again out of that cavern unhurt and corrupt, from that place whither he had fled from the face of Saul, concealing himself from ungodly men, whom Saul prefigured, but showing himself to his members. For the members of him rising again by his members were handled, for the members of him, the apostles, touched him rising again and believed. Luke 24, 39 And behold, nothing profited the persecution of Saul. Hear we therefore now the song, because concerning the title thereof enough we have spoken, as far as the Lord has deigned to give. Have pity on me, O God, have pity on me, for in you has trusted my soul. Verse 1. Christ in the Passion says, Have pity on me, O God. To God, God says, Have pity on me. He that with the Father has pity on you, in you cries, Have pity on me. For that part of him which is crying, Have pity on me, is thine. From you this he received, for the sake of you, that you should be delivered with flesh he was clothed. The flesh itself cries, Have pity on me, O God, have pity on me. Man himself, soul and flesh. For whole man did the word take upon him, and whole man the word became. Let it not therefore be thought that there Saul was not, because the evangelist thus says, The word was made flesh and dwelt in us. John 1, 14. For man is called flesh, as in another place says the scripture, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Shall any wise flesh alone see, and shall Saul not be there? You hear the master praying, learn thou to pray. For to this end he prayed, in order that he might teach how to pray. Because to this end he suffered, in order that he might teach how to suffer. To this end he was again, in order that he might teach how to hope for rising again. And in the shadow of your wings I will hope, until iniquity pass over. This now evidently, whole Christ does say, here is also our voice, for not yet has passed over, still strife is iniquity, still rife is iniquity, and in the end our Lord himself said there should be an abounding of iniquity. And since iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, but he that shall have persevered unto the end, the same shall be saved. Matthew twenty four twelve. 
But who shall per persevere even unto the end, even until iniquity pass over? He that shall have been in the body of Christ, he that shall have been in the members of Christ, and from the head shall have learnt the patience of persevering. Thou passest away, and behold, past are your temptations. And you got into another life, whither have gone holy men, if holy you have been. Into another life have gone martyrs, if martyr you shall have been, thou also goest into another life. Because thou hast passed away hence, has by any means iniquity therefore passed away? There are born other unrighteous men, as there die some unrighteous men. In like manner, therefore, as when unrighteous men die and others are born, so some just men go and others are born. Even unto the end of the world, neither iniquity will be wanting to oppress nor righteousness to suffer. I will cry to God most high, verse 2. If most high he is, how hears he you crying? Confidence has been engendered by experience. To God he says, who had done good to me? If before that I was seeking him, he did good to me, when I cry, shall he not hearken to me? For good to us the Lord God has done in sending to us our Saviour Jesus Christ, that he might die for our offenses and rise again for our justification. Romans 4.25 for what sort of man has he willed his son to die? For ungodly men, but ungodly men were not seeking God and have been sought of God, for he is most high in such sort as that not far from him is our misery and our groaning. Because near is the Lord to them that have bruised the heart, God that has done good to me. He has sent from heaven and has saved me, verse 3. Now the man himself, now the flesh itself, now the Son of God, after his partaking of ourselves of him, it is manifest how he was saved and has sent from heaven the Father and has saved him, has sent from heaven and has raised him again. But in order that you may know, that also the Lord himself has raised again himself. Both truths are written in Scripture, both that the Father has raised him again, and that himself, himself has raised again. Hear ye how the Father has raised him again. The Apostle says, He has been made, he says, obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also has exalted him, and has given him a name which is above every name. Philippians 2, 8 and 9 You have heard of the Father raising again and exalting the Son. Hear ye how that he to himself his flesh has raised again. Under the figure of a temple, he says to the Jews, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. John 2.19 But the evangelist has explained to us what it was that he said, but this he says, he spoke of the temple of his body. Now therefore, out of the person of one praying, out of the person of a man, out of the person of the flesh, he says, he has saved me. He has given unto reproach those that trampled on me, them that have trampled on him, that over him dead have insulted, that him as though man have crucified, because God they perceive not, them he has given unto reproach. See ye whether it has not been so done. The thing we do not believe as yet to come, but fulfilled we acknowledge it. 
the Jews waged against Christ. They were overbearing against Christ. Where? In the city of Jerusalem. For where they reigned, there they were puffed up. There their necks they lifted up. After the passion of the Lord, thence they were rooted out, and they lost the kingdom where in Christ for king they would not acknowledge. In what, man, in what manner they have been given unto reproach, see ye, dispersed they have been throughout all nations, nowhere having a settlement, nowhere a sure abode. But for this reason still Jews they are, in order that our books they may carry to their confusion. For whenever we wish to show Christ prophesied of, we produce to the heathen these writings. Unless perchance men hard of belief should say that we Christians have composed these books, so that together with the gospel which we have preached we have forged the prophet, through whom there might seem to be foretold that which we preach. By this we convince them, namely, that all the very writings wherein Christ has been prophesied are with the Jews, all these very writings the Jews have. We produce documents from enemies to confound other enemies. In what sort of report, therefore, are the Jews? a document the Jew carries, wherefrom a Christian may believe. Our, our librarians they have become, just as slaves are wont behind their masters to carry documents, in such sort that these faint in carrying those profit by reading. And to such a reproach have been given the Jews, and there has been fulfilled that which so long before has been foretold. He has given unto reproach those that trampled on him, on me. But how great a reproach it is, brethren, that this verse they should read, and themselves, being blind, should look upon their mirror. For in the same manner the Jews appear in the Holy Scripture which they carry, as appears the face of a blind man in a mirror, by other men it is seen, by himself not seen.